G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Punt Gun. This is a standalone giant shotgun type weapon, and it's going to be awesome to use, hopefully. So, getting into these attachments, first of all, you've got the receivers here. It basically mirrors what you get from the double barrel shotgun. Uh, same with the barrels here. Go for an extended barrel for extra range and all that. And for the stocks, we'll chuck on a recoil compensating stock, even though it's probably not that essential, seeing as we will only be firing one shot, and recoil wouldn't matter. For the scopes, you actually get a, uh, or for the sights, you actually get a choice of scope if you feel like it, but I feel like that's a little bit overkill for a shotgun type weapon, unless you're using the slugs, which we'll get to a little bit. And there's also muzzle brake and compensator here if you want to control the recoil a bit at the expense of range. I'll leave that as that for now. And now we're getting to a little bit more interesting stuff. So this is the uh, actual projectiles that the thing shoots, and I'll just angle it there so you can actually see how long the bloody barrel is. So you've got the bird shot, the buck shot, which are um, basic sort of things, and you've got the explosive bird shot, which um, uh, curiously says stop here, and uh, it requires the idiot savant perk, so I'm pretty sure that's the motto saying don't bloody do this. You can have the flaming bees, which I'm pretty sure is just the uh, flaming version of uh, a bird shot there. Slugs, armor piercing slugs, dragon's breath. Steel birdshot, steel shot, explosive slug, and explosive buckshot. Of course, you need an idiot savant for explosive buckshot. But for explosive slug, uh, the motto seems, uh, uh, says that's fine, I suppose. So that's probably the best thing we'll do for damage for that. But I want to use this thing as a giant shotgun. So will we shall go for a bit of dragon's breath, I reckon. Of course, you've got a choke on this thing too, if you want to make this thing a little bit more accurate or make it reach a little bit further. So, you know what, we'll bite that, we'll go for a tight choke there. So that'll be very good, and there's also a legendary effect there if you feel like it. Now, if I actually exit this and draw the weapon, you can see that this thing in, third per in first person looks really long, and in first person it looks even longer. So you know what I'm going to do, I think it is time to enter some power armor here. That is much better in proportion, but only just. Alright, let's get into Gunners Plaza then. Righto, so here we are in Gunners Plaza, and I think for this thing to work, we need to have uh, this thing just be really, really powerful enough to one-shot Gunners, because um, this long reload, obviously it's going to be a little bit hard to actually kill things when you're got to reload like that, so... Okay, I wasn't even sprinting into that person, but whatever. And we completely missed there, good job. Uh, we just... Gotta... There we go, that's better. So some of the flaming effects doing well there. We'll just get nice and close to you, and shoot you in the face. There we go. So just like you'd think this thing would work, obviously going up close and shooting him in the face is a good way to do it and if that fails just use a thing in bats just for that guaranteed shot we somehow got her after all of that so that was good and we'll take out these turrets they'll be a lot easier to hit since we don't have to deal with um them moving around erratically so yeah there they go now as you can tell there the uh pellets are only doing like 10 um damage per shot and that is because that is uh there are so many pallets this thing is firing, and what I assume the game does is divide all of the damage from the base damage into the pallets, so if I was firing as many pallets as you would a, uh, a combat shotgun, I'd be doing a little bit more damage, and uh, let's quickly kill you, and we're firing that many pallets that the sound is actually struggling to keep up with all of that nonsense, so that's good, we'll go ahead and knock you over, you too, or maybe not you too, okay, well... We did knock you over, but it was delayed, so pain train stopped being so broken. And since you've gone to mutation station, we'll just go ahead and uh, shoot you in the face like this. Much better damage on you there with the crit. And without the crit, uh, we can't really tell. But every time we fire this thing at close range, the sound is breaking, so that's making it very not enjoyable to use, which is kind of a shame. We'll try to knock over this bloke in here. There you go. Down you go, mate, and we'll kick you while you're down. Oh, that's an awful, awful noise. So the reload animation here is basically the same as the um, the uh, double barrel shotgun. I think I've got a Battlefield 1 animation pack for that stuff. So, oh, you can stagger me, so you're going to die to a crit. Hopefully. There we go, that's better. 
And yeah, it's looking good like that. We'll go ahead and knock out that turret from a little bit longer and see if this thing can't reach out like we'd expect a punt gun to do. As you can tell there, we're doing pretty good damage. We've got that gunner to mutate in one shot. But um, yeah, the DPS on this thing suffers because you've got to sit, a li sit through a lengthy reload every time you shoot. So performance-wise, this is actually failing pretty badly. We'll go ahead and crit through the wall here using buckshot because that would make sense. Yeah, it, did, it made sense to do that little damage, so good job game for doing that. We'll go ahead and just bash that thing to death, and you can die through a little bit of uh, critting here. Down you go, and I'll leave you with a fusion core. How did that not kill the dude in there? Anyway, you get a crit. We have to just sit through this, reload again. And the power armor paint there is just a white creation club paint. I've got the uh, winter ENBs on, so uh, yeah, you'll have another fusion core, mate. We'll go ahead and just close that door. And okay, you're, you're um, very, very protected against fusion core explosions, it would seem. I think the terrain in here just messes around with it a little bit, but we are running quite low on crypt at this point, and you're playing pretend guns, Lieutenant. Um, that's why you weren't promoted, and we finally got there. We have to sit through this goddamn reload and bats, and it's actually quite irritating. We'll go ahead and knock you down. Ooh, you've got an M60 by looks. That's a nice gun. Not nice enough to save you from a crit to the face. There we go. Oh, headphone warning, people. This is uh, pretty bad uh, in the sound. Uh, let's see. Got a melee gunner in here. We'll see if we can't just uh, shoot him in the face and kill him like that. Uh, much more satisfying. So I think what I might do after this is switch out the buckshot for something like a slug. We've got a, like a 1100 damage um, on that explosive one, so that intrigues me very well. And uh, oh, we got staggered there for a second. Um, someone here's got a high-powered rifle. Um, you shouldn't be able to stagger power armor. That's uh, bullshit. I call bullshit there. Uh, it's a little bit of an effect of the uh, modern weapons mod. They like to add a bunch of stagger and knockdown to your enemies when you shoot them with it, which is, I don't know, maybe realistic, but for gameplay purposes when you're in power armor being staggered, the only thing that can stagger power armor in my eyes is probably a death claw hitting it. Anyway, we'll knock the two of these down. We'll try to get a shot there. We get a little bit of a collateral, probably not. You know what, we'll knock you down again. We'll just get a little run up, and... Nope! There, man, pain train is quite inconsistent sometimes. You need to be sometimes running for a little bit before you can actually do that. And look at the barrel length on that. That's so ridiculous. Alright, we'll see if we can reach out and take out this turret easily enough. And yep, with a little bit of burning damage over time, we can do alright. But as you can tell, this thing is very lackluster indeed, so I think putting the explosive effect will definitely help this out since you're firing that many projectiles. And the wounding effect, yeah, look at all those 8s all over the screen. Think about that multiplied by 25 within t in terms of base damage or bleed damage, I think you'll be doing well with that. Oh, looks like I missed one. Well, let's see where how we do from all the way out here. Pretty badly, you can see that the spread of the thing is going pretty much all around her. Okay, that one was a little bit better. See if we can get her with this one. There we go. Three times the charm. Yep, so in terms of performance, this thing is performing pretty terribly, to be honest. Um, while it does look cool and uh, sounds cool in theory, um, not really that fun to use, to be honest. I'd much rather have just a regular double barrel shotgun and use that, but uh, we'll move on to Swan now and change up the attachments. Swan's over there fighting with various rust devils and such, so we've uh, taken off the extended barrel on this thing and put on the uh, sawn off barrel, so now it looks a little bit better in proportion. It's still a very, very large weapon indeed, but uh, yeah, we can use it without power armor and not feel like a little dwarf. So that's nice, so I think Swan has finished off the last of those uh, raiders there, and uh, he's doing pretty good for health, honestly, so we should be fine just to fight him, and we can call it like it is an actual fight here, so we'll lock onto Swan now, and we'll go ahead and hit him in bats. Obviously the short barrel there, and the uh, reflex side is going to make us a little bit better with using bats, and uh, is that a stagger on Swan there? That's useful. 
Okay, that might be actually a nice little thing to do with this one, um, because obviously not a lot of things can stagger him unless they really hit hard, unless they just have to be shooting him with some sort of uh, modern weapon, but it looks like he's going through that stagger animation again, so that might, exact that might actually be us doing that. Plenty of that shots later. This thing does about, I don't know, maybe... 1500 damage, so we're doing pretty good there. Unfortunately, we don't have a suppressor, don't really have um, much benefit of the sneak attack criticals, and we get detected quickly. So we're getting about a thousand damage on him per hit, which is pretty good. That means we'll be at, we'll end him in around uh, 30 to 40, uh, 30 to 35 hits every every if everything lines up properly. Got a full action point bar. We'll just use that to kill Swan again. Because I think this is the way you sort of need to use this thing to make it viable. Um, although Swan is a giant target, you should be fine to take him out without using bats. But um, getting those guaranteed shots on the head will make you uh, do a little bit more damage. The only problem is you have to sit there and watch the game sort of play itself. But every time you get a crit, you get to spam the crap out of the space bar if you feel like it. If only this thing was just reloaded a little bit faster, I think it'd be a little bit more viable, but um, good thing he's still attacking that raider there because uh, he's not chasing us down, which makes him less of a hassle to worry about. We're back into contortion, interestingly enough, not getting the sneak attack criticals because we uh, he's still in a uh, semi sort of uh, aggroed state. Um, and there is a little bit of a delay between um, when you've got the thing loaded between when you can fire. Um, not when I'm crouched, in, interestingly enough, but as you can tell there, you might have heard me spam the mouse button to actually fire the thing, but um, yeah, there's a little bit of a delay, which is kind of annoying. It reminds me of the delay that they put on the uh, harpoon gun in the Far Harbor DLC, and that just made it so hard to use because um, not only was the, the thing's projectiles uh, travel relatively slow, you've got a huge trigger delay on it, or after you reload it, so it's hard to sort of time the hits, or hard to sort of uh, lead the targets. And look at that nice little explosive slug going with a custom little asset there. Very, very good looking indeed. So the um, attention to detail with this mod, with its projectiles, has gone far. And there you have it, Swan is dead. Uh, we can improve this thing with one specific legendary effect, and you've probably thought of it from the moment I started this video. Righto, so we've attached none other than the never-ending effect, so we should probably have an easy time killing this Mylurk kill claw overlord thing, so we'll get, get stuck into him. Now, if it's like the regular double barrel shotgun with the never-ending effect, it probably means I can fire it really fast, and indeed I can, which is good. So we only need to wait for him to come sort of close. In fact, we'll just, uh, whoop, camera... That did something there, and that will wait for him to charge up to us, and then we'll just light him up with as many explosive slugs as we can, and without having to sit through that reload, this thing can actually do uh, really good damage, so um, there you have it, that was the uh, explosive, uh, the, yeah, the explosive slug thing, um, on the uh, punt gun there, and uh, would I recommend this mod? No, I wouldn't. I think the weapon is too, uh, it's just not really that fun to use, and it's too low damaging to be viable in a playstyle. It's more of a novelty weapon, so if you find yourself in, or uh, if you really like punt guns in general, then uh, yeah, it's a pretty good weapon to have, I suppose, but uh, not for me. I'll probably be uninstalling this mod after this vi recording, and I will not be seeing it back on this PC. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Mod link's in the description if you're interested.